A huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video where I show you two examples of blending a tracked Milky Way with an untracked foreground. The first one's pretty straightforward. The second one's a little bit more complicated because we have blurry foreground subjects in the tracked exposure. So I'll show you how to deal with those. But let's start with this image here. I have my foreground, 50 mil, two minutes. You can see that the stars are trailing. And then I use a star tracker to get nice sharp stars. This time the foreground is trailing because the camera moves on the star tracker. And in in this exposure I've captured mainly sky because I'm not going to use the foreground in this image but I have enough to make the alignment. So I'm going to select both of these images, go to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So in my example the sky is on top so I'm going to rename that sky, rename the other to FG for foreground and I actually want my foreground on top so I'm going to drag that up and the idea is that we're going to be using layer masks. And to add a layer mask, you press this button here, the white rectangle with the black circle. And now I get this extra white box on my foreground layer. And now if I select a brush by pressing B, and I wanna make sure I have a black brush and I'm working on the layer mask, it's actively selective and I'm painting black. And that basically hides the foreground layer. So you can see anything that's black on the layer mask is telling this image not to be seen. Anything that's white gets shown. So you could kind of like manually try and paint it in, but when you get to the horizon, it's gonna be very complicated and difficult. So we actually wanna use a selection instead. So I'm gonna come up here and use the quick selection tool. I'm gonna to brush over the foreground. And then in the top left, I'm gonna make sure I've got add selection selected. And I'm gonna try and select these telescopes as well. But this is a very rough selection. So I'm gonna come up to select and mask. And on the left, you have here the Refine Edge Brush Tool. I'm gonna to select that. And when you brush over the selection, it just tells Photoshop to have another think and make a slightly better selection. And so you can see it's a little bit rough at the moment. So I'm gonna increase the contrast to get rid of some of these gray areas on the edge. And I'm gonna increase the feathering to about one pixel. And I'm gonna press OK. And then now when we add a layer mask, it adds a layer mask with that selection that we just made. So if I select the move tool, I can move my sky layer underneath. Now normally I'd line up as perfectly as I could, but I'll show you how to get rid of these blurry foreground subjects in the next example. For now, I'm just gonna hide them behind the sharp foreground. And if I zoom in, you can see that some of these telescopes are kind of transparent. And so we can inspect the mask by holding Option and clicking on the mask. Use Alt if you're on a Windows PC. And we wanna try and get a pretty solid white and black mask. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select a brush by pressing B. I wanna make sure I've got a white brush. I'm gonna change the opacity to 50%. And I'm gonna change the mode of the brush to overlay. And what this does is basically when you paint white with an overlay mode, it only paints over stuff that's brighter than 50% gray. So you can see when I brush over this telescope, it helps me to paint within the lines. But I've kind of ruined the dark edge a little bit, so I'm gonna to switch to black by pressing X. And I'm just gonna paint over the edge as well. Switch back to white by pressing X. See if we can get a better edge on this telescope here. Switch to black and tidy up the outer edge. That's looking a lot better. Switch to white here so I can get a better mask here. Switch to black and tidy up the outside edge. You can see this telescope here hasn't been selected very well. I'm gonna show you this with this view. And I'm gonna select the layer mask again because I wanna paint on the layer mask, not the image itself. Using a white brush, you can see how I can bring this telescope back. Same for this little telescope here. Same for this weird steel structure here. This telescope is a bit see-through. And this telescope has also lost a few lights. So I'm gonna change the brush to normal. And I'm gonna brush white onto the mask to bring these lights back. There we go. And switch back to the overlay blend mode so that I can bring this steel structure back, same for this telescope. And there we go, we now have a much better mask on our image. And from here, you can continue to edit your image, but I'm not gonna show you that today because today's video is all about the blending process. 
Now, before I show you the second, slightly more complicated example, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members from over 150 different countries. If you enjoy my videos, I'm sure you'll love the astrophotography related content on Skillshare, particularly Ian Norman's Nightscapes Landscape Astrophotography class. It's an amazing crash course for beginners and those of you looking to photograph the Milky Way. But you can find classes on all things creative from photography to videography, video editing, logo design, website design, freelancing, learning language, and so much more. I've used Skillshare for many things over the past few years. Lately, I took Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success class, and it's really helped to improve my planning, my scripting, my filming, my editing, and just the general production quality of my videos. And I hope you guys have noticed the improvements as well. And Skillshare are offering the first 1,000 of you to follow the link in the video description down below a completely free month trial of Skillshare Premium. You can access all of the classes available on Skillshare and you can try as many of them out as you like in that month. So whether you're just looking for a new hobby or you want to learn some new skills to put on your resume and improve your career prospects, an investment in Skillshare is an investment in yourself. So what are you waiting for? Follow the link in the video description down below and come and join thousands of others on Skillshare taking the next step in their creative journey. Okay, so for this example, I've got a two minute exposure for my foreground here, stars are trailing, and then I've got a two minute exposure for the sky with the star tracker, we've got nice sharp stars, but you can see we've got these blurry foreground subjects, so how do we deal with these? Well, we're going to start like we did last time on the foreground layer, and I'm going to use the quick selection tool, and I'm just going to brush across the foreground, and then with the plus selection option, ticked we are going to select the antennae of alma observatory in chile and again i'm going to come up to the select and mask just make sure we get a better selection on these edges and bring in those steel structures on top of the antennae like so and i'm just going to keep going across the edge make the brush a little bit bigger so i can select the steel structures here and just keep going across the edges. So again, I'm going to increase the contrast again to get a bit more of a white-black selection and increase the feathering by about a pixel. I'm just going to add a layer mask so that we've now got a nice mask on the foreground and we can move the sky into position. And as you can see, we've now got these blurry telescopes showing through in the sky exposure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the visibility of the foreground layer off. And then what I would have done in the past was perhaps make a selection around this telescope, come to edit content away fill. As you can see here, it hasn't done a very good job. And in the past, I would have tried to make this work by fixing things a bit manually with the clone stamp and things like that, but now Photoshop has this new tool called the Remove tool. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit to this telescope and basically brush over with this sexy pink color. And hopefully you'll see it does a much better job than Content Aware Fill because it's using AI to generate a replacement. And look how good of a job that's done compared to content away fill. So I'm gonna do the same for this telescope here. And it's gone. <laughs> I'm gonna do the same for this one here. It does such a good job. And I'm even gonna use it on this big telescope here. And content away fill would have done an absolutely awful job trying to get rid of such a big object like this. And it's worth noting that you could also use the new generative fill that's available in Photoshop beta right now. It's the uh, the hot topic right now. But I'm just going to use this remove tool. And boom, that's done a pretty amazing job. There's a few patchy areas, but hopefully they'll be hidden by my foreground layer. So I don't need to worry about those. There is a little patch here where there's not many stars. So I'm going to try and make it do that again because it does look a bit strange mm, that's probably worse <laughs> but i'd keep trying until i got a better result and uh, just going to bring the foreground layer back now you can see there's a little bit of a blurred foreground 
the lower right here. So what I'm going to do is with the sky layer selective and active, I'm going to press Command and T or Control and T if you're on Windows. And then at the top here, you can have this button which allows you to switch between free transform and warp mode. So we want to go into warp mode so that I can just drag this lower right corner behind the sharp foreground. I'm going to check if there's any other areas looks okay and similar to last time we're going to hold option and click on the layer mask and just do uh, a little bit of tidying up with a white brush and a black brush and um, using the overlay blend mode to make sure we've got a nice white and black mask and again bringing back the lights that will cut out from the selection earlier using a normal brush and then lastly I just need to do a crop so I'm going to bring in that edge there I'm going to make sure I've got all the usable sky here and I don't like this blurry telescope on the right so I'm going to crop that out and at the same time bring this telescope nicely onto the third and then from here, you can continue your editing. You know, if you want to add some contrast with curves, you can add some, some contrast with the curves and just go through your normal editing process. So I hope you found this video useful, guys. This is how I blend my tracked Milky Ways with the foregrounds, usually just making a manual selection, tidying up the mask with a, an overlay brush, and then getting rid of any blurry foreground elements using this new remove tool and as i mentioned you can also use the new generative fill that's in the photoshop beta which i'm sure will be in photoshop soon enough and that will give you different options to choose the best one to make sure those telescopes have been removed in as clean as a possible way so drop a like if you have found this video useful make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon i wish you good luck and clear skies